What is up everyone, Nayflar here, and welcome to episode 1 of my brand new series, the top 5 mods of the month for Fallout 4 on PS4. You all seem to really like my top 10 mods on PS4 videos, and new mods are being made every day, and I want to help showcase the best ones, and I reckon this is the best way to do it. So in this video, we are going to have a look at the 5 best mods for Fallout 4 on PS4 that were created in May. If you want to keep up to date with this series and be notified when a new episode releases, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell button. Now let's get started with the top 5. At number 5 we have Doc's Armoured Clothing by Dr. Mabuse1981. This mod was created for the mod author's personal use, but they decided to share the mod with all of us and I'm glad they did. The mod contains 5 new outfits and restores the bandolier, which was cut from the base game of Fallout 4 before release. All of these outfits can be crafted at the chemistry station and modified at the armour workbench. I'm not sure why they cut the bandolier from the game, because it's a pretty neat piece of clothing that can make you look like Lara Croft if your sole survivor is female, or Nathan Drake if your sole survivor is male. The five different outfits added by the mod are Kate's corset, which is nothing new, however without this mod, to obtain the corset you had to trade with Kate and equip her with another outfit. Now you and Kate can both have the corset, or if you just never go to the combat zone in your playthrough, you will still have a way to get the corset. You also have the option to add three different levels of damage resistance at the armor workbench. Mark 1 gives you 5 ballistic resistance, Mark 2 gives you 85 ballistic and 5 energy resistance, and Mark 3 gives you 200 ballistic and 8 energy resistance, which is actually more than you would get with the highest level of ballistic weave. You can also get the feathered dress, also known as Irma's dress. In the base game, the only way to obtain this dress was by killing or pickpocketing Irma from the memory den. This allows you to get the dress without stealing from or brutally murdering an innocent woman. You can also add damage resistance at the workbench. Next up is the slinky dress, which is pretty much just the red dress from the base game. However, with this mod, you can change the colour of the dress from red to blue at the armour workbench, as well as adding one of the three levels of damage resistance. You also get the flowery dress, which like the bandolier was also cut from the base game. Just keep in mind that this can only be worn by female characters, it's just a simple pre-war dress, nothing too exciting, but if you want to go for a classy pre-war look, you might want to use it. You can change the colour of the dress at the workbench between two different patterns, as well as adding the damage protection. Last but not least, you get the wasteland dress. This is the same outfit as the ratty skirt from the base game, which can be purchased from merchants. However, with this mod, you can add extra damage protection to it, and it gives you higher ballistic damage resistance than you could get with Ballistic Weave. Next up at number 4 is the Enclave Mobile Crawler Settlement by Voltman111. Feeling nostalgic for the Enclave? Or oh, this mod might be for you. The mod description says, this mod adds the Enclave Mobile Crawler into Fallout 4. The Enclave Mobile Crawler was seen in the Fallout 3 DLC Broken Steel, here's a picture for reference. It was originally a Space Shuttle Orbiter mobile platform that the Enclave had appropriated and a location to stash their most valuable technology. It was also used to launch orbital strikes from the Bradley Hercules satellite. This battle station is also where the Elite Squad Sigma, Train and Deathclaw experiments continue. This is a smaller but still massive recreation of the mobile crawler from Fallout 3 for Fallout 4. It acts as a fully functioning settlement over Oberlin Station. Voltman 111 also notes that before you download the mod, you should make sure you have nothing built in Oberland Station, as the mod completely reshapes the settlement, so it will ruin whatever you have built there. This is a very cool mod that clearly took a long time to create. If you're a big fan of the Enclave and you miss their presence in Fallout 4, this could be a good way to get your fill. Next up at number 3 is Minutemen Watchtowers by Spiffy Skytrooper. The mod description says, Once watching over the land from above, these now fallen Minutemen Watchtowers kept a lookout when the Minutemen reigned supreme in the Commonwealth. Since their fall, these lonely towers have been left to rot. If one is fortunate enough, you can still stumble across old Minuteman supply caches to aid you on your adventures. There are a total of 9 towers to be discovered, each with a respective map marker. Each tower contains some means of waiting slash sleeping, and has a container of loot to help you on your travels. One may ask why there's not more watchtowers, and that's for two simple reasons. 
Firstly, that the Commonwealth is very crowded with unmarked locations. Secondly, Spiffy Sky Trooper wanted to put these towers in semi-realistic places. This is a really nice mod that fills out the Commonwealth, making it a bit less of a barren wasteland and giving you more places to explore and discover. Plus, just the views you get at the top of these towers is worth downloading the mod for. If you're a fan of the Minutemen, or just want to add some more exploration opportunities to your Fallout, you should download this mod. The penultimate mod is Mad Kia by Madrox. This mod adds 500 new workshop items to your game, and as you could probably tell by the name of the mod, all of the designs are heavily inspired by the kind of furniture you would find in an IKEA store. The 500 objects are spread across the workshop menu, however most of them can be found under the furniture and decorations tabs. There is even a showroom that can be found on the east side of Walden Pond, where the freeway touches the ground. Unfortunately, there is an issue with the beds on PS4. Due to the modding restrictions, you can't actually sleep in them, so they can only be used as decoration. However, Madrox has included a pillow that can be used as a bed, which you can place on the bed as a workaround. A fantastic mod that adds an incredible amount of workshop items, much, much more than any of the workshop DLCs, so massive respect to Madrox for making this mod for us to use for free. Last but certainly not least, the best mod that released for Fallout 4 on PS4 in May is Skillzerk Weapons Pack by, you guessed it, Skillzerk. The mod description says that the mod adds 18 new weapons, but I actually counted 19 new weapons. It adds them to the loot lists, vendors and NPCs. I managed to buy most of them from Arturo in the Diamond City Marketplace, however you can also loot them from chests and find them on dead NPCs. The 19 guns included are the Combat Sniper Rifle which uses shell ammunition, it has more range, more accuracy and can be made auto slash semi auto by switching receivers. It uses shells, hence why it's called a Combat Sniper Rifle and it's made for combat and sniping but lacks critical hit bonus damage and the damage is divided among the pellets. You also get the semi-automatic assault rifle which uses 5mm rounds instead of 5.56 rounds. It has less damage but a bigger clip size. The gas ram sniper shotgun which uses shell ammunition, it has high accuracy, high range, high stagger, extremely low ammo capacity, slow reload but excessive damage. The 5mm pistol which uses 5mm ammunition instead of 10mm, it does less damage however it has a bigger magazine. The semi-auto hunting rifle which uses .308 ammunition, it's a semi-auto fire type instead of a bolt action fire type and has lower damage per shot. <laughs> The light machine gun uses 308 calibre, it has medium stagger, high magazine capacity, high weight, decent damage and machine gun comparable accuracy. You also get the 50 calibre revolver which uses 50 cal ammunition, it has higher damage, high critical damage multiplier and higher vats cost. You also get the combat laser rifle which uses fusion cell ammunition, it has a slightly higher range, less impact force, less recoil and shoots blue laser beams. The metal storm machine gun which uses 5mm ammunition, it has a heavy weight, insane firing speed, no bonus critical damage high vats cost and a slow reload speed. The Czech machine pistol which uses 0.38mm ammunition, it has a slightly higher cost, 10 round magazine, higher vats cost, medium rate of fire, high reload speed, slightly reduced range and can be made auto or semi-auto with attachments. The multi-missile launcher which shoots 4 missiles at once, however has a slow reload. The Combat Gauss Rifle which has a high damage per round, extreme medium range velocity, slightly higher range, medium reload speed, low magazine size and uses 2mm EC ammo. The Glock 20 which is a full auto 10mm pistol. The FN15 NATO pistol which uses 5.56 ammo. The .44 Rugger which uses .44 ammunition. The Incendiary Rifle which uses flare rounds, shoots flame rounds and sets things on fire as you would expect. The Liquid Nitrogen Combat Rifle which uses cryocells and shoots ice rounds, 
that leave liquid nitrogen on impact and freeze things over time. The o Alloy Combat Rifle, which uses gamma rounds, fires radioactive ammunition and can poison living targets. And finally, you get the Tsar Bomber, which uses mini-nuke ammunition and launches a carpet of nukes and costs an absolute shit ton to buy. This thing doesn't just cost a bomb to buy, it seriously costs a nuke. You're probably going to have to use cheats to get enough caps to buy this thing. All in all, this is a great mod that adds some more spice and variety to the weapons of Fallout 4. If you're tired of using the same old weapons, you should 100% download this mod. That will take us to the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like, hit subscribe and hit the notifications bell button to see more videos like this in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe out there in the wasteland.